All right, Cameron Buford, voice of the fans. I got Mr. Peter Rosenberg with me. Able to slow him down, folks. He's a busy dude, man. What, what the heck you got going on? You, you're doing TV, you're doing radio, you, you're commentating basketball games? Yes, what, yes. What's I, going I, on, I stay man? busy, man. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, some call me the hardest working man in show business. I would like to be the one day be the smartest working man in show business. But okay. uh, right now, I am working pretty hard. I, I do uh, I'm doing mornings on Hot 97 in New York, I do afternoons on. Uh, 98.7 ESPN New York. I do some moonlighting and, and wrestling. Uh, yeah, other Wait, ESPN. wrestling? You do some moonlighting? Are you getting in the ring? Jim? No, you're not going to see me. You're, 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 you're not going to see me in the ring. You'll just see me talking about wrestling. Okay, okay. Right. Talking about who's your favorite wrestler? Let's take let's take it back then. Who's your favorite wrestler? Um, I, I go back to Nikita Koloff. Okay, yeah, that's a, that's a far I go back. No doubt. Um, um, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Seattle. Okay. So we, we had w, WCW. And then WWE came a little later, yep. but it was mainly WCW. And there were some other territories that were specifically out there in the Pacific Northwest, too. That's where Roddy Piper got started. It was in Portland. Uh, I, was a, I was We knew about Roddy, but I wasn't really a Roddy fan. And then I didn't understand the kind of how regionalized it is here until here recently. Well, yeah, it was. It was a very regional thing at that time in the, in the early 80s, late 70s, and before that. But uh, my all-time favorites are uh, Bret Hart. Um, okay. Macho Man, Randy Savage. Macho Man. Um, but I mean, I, I admire so many, to be honest. You know, I'm such a, I'm pretty, uh, I'm a pretty nerdy enthusiast when it comes to it. So it's sort of like hip hop. I have a lot of people that I love. Yeah. So you, you brought up hip hop. I want to ask you your top five, but that's too cheesy. I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm not gonna. Well, and also I, it changes every day, you know. So does it's it hard. change every day? Yeah, I don't have a set top five. I, I don't. The, I don't. Well, you bring it down. You break it down by genre? How, I mean, how does it Well, change? I mean, just in hip-hop, there, again, there are just too many artists that I love and admire. So, like, I have general people that are towards the top, you know, people okay. I really, really love. Okay. Um, but it's hard for me to say, like, you know, I made a list around, the, around that time. Everyone was making lists. I made a list. But the lists are arbitrary, ultimately. Yeah. I mean, how do you decide? It's all subjective, right? It's art. Very much, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not yeah. sports. Even sports is subjective, but music's much more subjective. Yeah, very, very much so. Talk about the evolution of hip hop and, and kind of what you what your thoughts are on, on the evolution. I mean, obviously it wasn't what it was when Rakim was hot. L L man, he L was still playing. I mean, he's still making hits. But back in the day, talk about the evolution and where it's gone, where it was, and where it is now. I mean, you know, it's 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 it's, it's incredible. It's, it's been it's the same age as me. You know, the exact um, in terms of commercial, the, uh, you know, in terms of commercially. Hip hop being available, Sugar Hill Gang dropped July 1979, the month I was born. Mm -hmm. So it's for, 40 years. It's been it's been a growing genre. It's now the number one genre in the world. Um, That's crazy. That's and so crazy. you know, it's changed a lot. It's had a lot of different incarnations, and you know, in my career and with what I do every day, I have to stay open minded and you know, uh, learn to enjoy. All different kinds of music. Uh, it's, you know, you, you got to be mindful, and, and, and when it's your business, you know, you give things more of a chance than maybe you would if you were just kind of like, oh, I was into the music when I was a teenager. Now the rest of it, nah. I have to sort of stay afloat. You know, it's not the same for me. Obviously, I've grown up, so I can't sit there and act like the records that are club hits today. I'm as passionate about as I was when I was 14. Sure, sure. But I wasn't as passionate. I'm not as passionate about anything today as I was when I was 14. Well, um, there might be some things. There one, might be some Like things. one thing. I, okay. Well, Besides that, <laughs> that's basically the only thing. And probably not as much as I was 14. This, this whole business um, can be crazy for people. And um, I've just been, I just try to be really grateful for all the things that, that I've had. And, you know, you get to a week like this um, where you get to look around and be like, wow, I'm at the heavyweight championship world like, this is going to be that's the reason I had to take this trip is because you know this moment is going to be something special um, and being around for a, a big fight is a big deal being around for a big heavyweight fight is a, is a different kind of thing. this do you believe in the lineal championship or are you a believer in the lineal not really okay uh, I mean I, I believe that Tyson Fury is worthy of having that title um I, I just find it annoying that it's like the only time we use this word. Well, right. It's right. Like the only, you don't even use the word anywhere else to signify anything except here. How, just, how long ago was it that he beat Klitschko? I give him credit. That was a hell of a fight. He beat Klitschko who hadn't been beaten. I think it was 10 years at the time. Yeah, and it was, that was already about five years ago. Yeah, six yeah. Years ago, okay, and then he kind of took a sabbatical. Um, he's not a champion anymore. Um, 
So, I mean, how can you say that's a champion? I, I, I struggle with that one. I struggle with that. Yeah, I, I understand what they're saying. He's sort of the descendant of that title, and he never lost it. So I get it. Okay. But, um, listen, the champion of the world is who wins this fight. So it doesn't matter. Who who do you think had who do you think won the first fight? Um, I, I I actually had it very close to a draw. I was not mad at the draw. Okay. I know a lot of people didn't. Wow. I personally thought it was a very close fight. Okay. Um, I listen. I had a tie five five going into the tenth, and you got knocked down in the tenth, and you got knocked down in twelve. That was that, clear. That, see, that was the fight, and see, that was enough. That was enough. Yeah, that was. Yeah, enough. I I had it. I probably, if I was forced to choose, would have gone wilder. But let me put it this way: I wasn't upset with the draw. I understood it, and uh, it set up for moments. Like this. It set up for moments like this. Now, you know, we'll see what happens and whether this ends up leading to a third. My prediction is, um, you know, it ends up being a close fight and an interesting fight, and the winner will fight Joshua. And then my guess is these two will do it again for a third time. That, that would not surprise me. And when you have that draw there, you never know. You could always get a fourth time. Is, um, is Joshua still a draw now? He certainly is in England. I mean, because obviously he has, a, he has a belt. He came back and beat Ruiz. But I thought Ruiz, shame on Ruiz for doing it, not training. I, like, I agree. Ruiz did not do the job he should have done because he could have had a chance. But the fact is you can't take that away from Joshua. He did what he had to do. And you also can't take away the fact that he will draw 80,000 people to this day. So that fight Period. should happen. Uh, I, I, I am of the thought that these are the two best heavyweights and Josh was the third best. Okay. That being said, because of the fans he has in Europe, um, England specifically, he, he's very valuable and important. Do you have a, do you have a prediction? you want to give a prediction? Um, I will take Deontay Wilder um, by knockout in the eighth round. Okay, I say the ninth. I say the ninth, but we're pretty close. I mean, it's, at this point, it's, it's a guess. Let's yeah. be honest. I mean, it's, it's not going to be, I don't mean an early knockout, but I think it'll be a knockout. Redskin fan, right? Correct. You want to touch on the Redskin? No. You, you don't want nothing Let's keep it to the fight. You know? <laughs> I'm good. Come, come on. You heard, did you hear about the new change they just made? Um, do you prefer 17 games or an extra playoff? Uh, I, I have mixed feelings. I mean, if the players can get lifetime health care, then I'm cool with all, with all of it. That, that's, what's up. That's, what's, that's what's being bargained. So that would be cool. Um, otherwise, no, I don't need a 17 game season. I think it's weird to have an odd number. I'm used to 16 games. I just, I'm not desperate for another week of football. Um, I get it, but it's just greedy. And there's already so much wear and tear on these players physically and mentally. So I'm, I'm not clamoring for more. Knicks fan? No. Celtics fan. Celtics fan. Interesting. Very. Well, they're, I mean, Celtics are solid. I, Very solid. I, I, Perpetually solid. To, to, yeah. To, to be honest with you, I, I had the uh, Sixers win in the East. But the Celtics, I mean, between them, it's between them and Toronto right now. And the Bucs. I, I, I mean, uh, the, uh, I felt like the Bucs, I felt like the Bucs, how I felt about Toronto the last time. Just, they're very good. They'll get right there, but I don't think they can finish. For whatever. I don't know, a lot of a lot of people seem to love the Bucs right now. I think the Raptors are very good. Listen, it's, it's a good, those final four teams will be very competitive. It drops off big after that. But yeah. between Milwaukee, Toronto, Philly, and Boston, that's a great four basketball team. That is. I know, I mean, Trino, Philly hasn't always been their best version of themselves. They're struggling, yeah. Same with Boston at times. But you really look at it, those are four competitive teams. I went to a Celtics Bucks game last year. We were completely just out matched in every way. We're a better team this year. Um, so I, I think it's a fun NBA. It, it's it's, it's, it's going to be a very interesting playoffs. Um, the emotion around everything will be interesting. The Lakers, obviously, will be very interesting for so many reasons. So uh, I'm looking forward to playing. I really appreciate your time. I'm going to leave it with this. What does Kobe Bryant mean to you guys on the East Coast? Um, I spend a lot of time in Los Angeles, so um, you cannot understate how much he means to Los Angeles specifically. I, I live but, in Los Angeles. It's so it's unbelievable. A huge, yeah, it, uh, and I spent a lot of time there during his career. Spent a lot of time there since. Kobe is a thing that's just he's so culturally built into LA. It's it's, it's hard to really put in words. But outside of LA, you know, he's equally huge everywhere. Uh, he's huge. You know, he's he's huge. It was a huge deal. Uh, I saw him at the Garden several times. I was there for the Jeremy Lin game. Oh wow! Lin versus Kobe. Uh, 
Uh, I think I think Lynn went for 38, Kobe went for 34. Yeah. It was just unbelievable. One of the best sporting events I've ever been at. Okay. Um, whenever Kobe was at the Garden, it was a show. He had so many fans there. I hosted an event of his in the morning. There was a line out the door for hours in the, in the cold to see Kobe talk. Um, and we, he, it was a sneaker release that I hosted, and I'm so grateful I got to do that. Um, he's huge in New York. He's huge everywhere. He's an absolute icon. He's one of the greatest of all time. He's, I, I probably watched him play more basketball than any other basketball player. So, really? Oh yeah, he was. He was. Uh, he was my favorite player. He kept you up on the East Coast, huh? Always. We okay. always stayed up late on Thursday nights to watch Kobe. That was. That was the thing. Okay, and yeah, that's super. Again, Peter, I want to thank you for your time. Do one thing for me. Uh, again, thank you for your time. I appreciate your career, man. I, I'm, again, a friend of mine hooked me up with you and or put me on to you in the show, and you guys are doing good, great work. So congratulations to you.